Wolves Nuggets. These teams played a ton in the regular season, given that they are in the same division. They played in the playoffs last year. And yet, frankly, not many of those games had Carl Anthony Towns and Nas Reed and Jaden McDaniels, a full-strength Minnesota squad. We also are coming off of a series where I think the Wolves blew expectations of what they were going to be this postseason, frankly, out of the water. And so I'm not sure how much the regular season or even last playoffs can really be used to measure how close this series is going to be. Well, if the first round was any uh, indication, not at all, right? Because the Phoenix Suns uh, routed the the Timberwolves in the regular season, won that se- regular season series 3-0, and then couldn't win a game in the, in the first round. So obviously the Den- Denver Nuggets are not the Phoenix Suns, but... You know, say that not, again. Not to keep not not to keep twisting the dagger here, but um, look, I, the Timberwolves have grown right in front of our eyes. I was really bullish on them in terms of their regular season success before the season. I'm a huge Anthony Edwards guy. Him going in to Phoenix and going toe to toe with Kevin Durant, toe to toe with Devin Booker, with Bradley Beal, just speaks to his confidence, his character, his talent level, all of that stuff. The Denver Nuggets are different beast man like this is this is the reigning champs with real bona fides with with wearing the belt this is the team I don't know that I'm going to go so far as to pick the Timberwolves in this series there are going to be some national people trying to get that hot take off and then be able to do the victory lap if I want to so bad that does oh it'd be so great and you know what respect to anybody doing it like go for it I'm still picking the Nuggets but this is going to be uh to me I don't know like the Timberwolves were under a lot of pressure going into the playoffs and in this season. But based on how the bracket laid out, you got Phoenix in the first round. Everybody, including everybody on this show, you, me, and Chris, picked Phoenix to win that series. The Timberwolves wiped the floor with them. And now you're going up against the best team in the league in the Denver Nuggets. And you could lose this series as long as you don't get swept, as long as you're competitive. I think that's going to be enough. I think it'll be enough proof of concept. Now, there's obviously like ownership issues with Minnesota and stuff too, which would might might take the the ultimate decision uh, out of the out of the front office's hands here. But in terms of keeping this group together and paying the luxury tax and all of that stuff, I think we're already there. I think this team is good enough uh, in terms of and and has proven. So, So basically, you're saying beating Phoenix the way they did, and as long as they're competitive in this series. Cat will be a T Wolf in October. As long as whatever happens with this new ownership group, they're willing to pay the money. If not, if of course, if they're saying we're just not going to pay it, we don't care, then that's it's going to be a money issue. But it won't be because of an on court product issue. Interesting. I uh, I think this series actually will tell us quite a bit about Towns, and so I think this will be an important data point. Right, his extension yeah. will kick in this summer. They will be $78 million above the cap, $15 million above the tax. I'm not, I, I think they can avoid being a second apron team, Wes, given those constraints. I'm not going to do the math here because we're talking about them heading into a playoff series, but I, I'm, I'm not ready to fully to say that, but I think it all hinges on how they play in this series, right? I will say, interesting tidbit on that note um, before we get into the X's and O's on this one. I happened to be walking through the, the the back alleys of Footprint Center in Phoenix after the Wolves won the series, which obviously happened on the road. Glenn Taylor was there. Very, very cool moment. You know, you can say everything you want about him as, a, as an owner. And did he backstab Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie, you know, cry for the hedge fund guy and the you know, millionaire athlete. But watching him, very old dude, walk through this, this hallway and he kind of has this group around him. They walk over to the locker room door. They kind of peek around. The players are are celebrating. And you could tell Taylor just wanted to go be part of that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And i not saying it so much from the perspective of the owner because I don't think sports fans care about their owners being happy. But just to put into perspective, 
what this run means for these guys, right? right. That was their first playoff series win in 20 years. And that's why and, you want to own a team, by the way. You don't own a team yeah. because you think it's a great investment, even though it is in a lot of circumstances. You kind of always wanted to be in that locker room, right? Like there's a certain little yeah. part of you that wants to be part of something like that. So it's, it's a great observation, and it's really cool that you were able to see that. Uh, so, yeah, I think, and that's, I think, a big reason why he's starting to back out of this, this uh, sale a little bit is because, yeah. and he basically has said this as much, it's, we really just built something, and I don't know that I am ready to let it go. And is it totally legal the way he's doing it? That's up to the courts and the negotiators to decide, uh, and the arbitrators to decide. But I do sort of empathize with the general notion of, you know what, maybe I'm not ready to let this thing go because we kind of just got special just as I was yeah. about to let the, let it go, and I might have the next Michael Jordan on my hands with Anthony Edwards, <laughs> right? and it's just like, like, hey, I I hired this hot shot GM from the Nuggets. I make a big yeah. swing for Rudy Gobert. If he's willing to spend to keep this group together, I think it makes sense to to stay owning the team and and figure it out down the road. But we'll, well see with let, all that. Let's jump off that with to, into the X's and O's because you mentioned Tim Actually, Connolly there. Exactly. Um, yeah. He built this Timberwolves roster. He came over from the Nuggets, built that roster. They end up going in ahead and winning a championship. He comes to Minnesota, makes the Rudy Gobert deal, widely panned, and I think everybody's going to take an L on that. But it, it was, I, I think it was a signal of, hey, we know, even though they have not won a championship yet, we know the West is going to go through the Denver Nuggets and Nikola Jokic. And, we got, and I'm going to start trying to figure out that puzzle right now. And I think... Yep. That's why you make that deal for Rudy Gobert because there's not a lot of guys who could just stand up to Nikola Jokic and limit him in in one way or the other. You're never going to shut him down, but if you could take something off the table for him, that's a win. Mm -hmm. And Gobert can at least do that in terms of, you know what, you're not going to just post move and punish me and kind of get into your little shots right at the rim. I'm going to take that away. And then you've got Carl Anthony Towns, the size, and all these other things. It'll This is going to be an interesting test case in whether or not the, the vision that Connolly had – in terms of taking down the thing that he built is viable. Well, I think that's a great place to to go too, because you mentioned like this series being a little bit of a hey, well, we've we lost to the best team. But like this is the best team. You gotta beat them if you're yep. gonna be the best team. So I think them being built better than other teams, and you heard the Nuggets and Nuggets fans and Nuggets media say how much this series tested Denver last year. They're they're in as good a position as anybody, and and Gobert is a reason why. But it's it's interesting to bring him up first because he hasn't guarded Jokic much in this matchup, right? It's it, they they took a, a a page out of the Sixers with PJ Tucker or the Lakers with Rui Hachimura playbook, and they said Cat or Nas Reed even mm -hmm. are going to be sort of the nominal post defender against jo uh, against Jokic. But I kind of lean with. Your framing, Wes, I don't think they can get away with that anymore. I think the Nuggets and Jokic have become entirely too comfortable with that coverage. Yeah. They're going to use Gordon as a playmaker to pull the big out and not even allow them to be a helper. They're going to, you know, have Jokic just get in, you know, motion, be a role man, be a driver, and overpower those smaller guys. Maybe that's a little less easy to do with Towns than it would be with Rui. But I just don't think that's tenable. You saw the Lakers go away from it. I think Gobert will will guard Jokic. Maybe not, I'm not going to say the majority of the series, but when the Wolves buckle down and try to get stops and win games, I think that's the matchup we'll see. And I think on the other end, Gobert is going to have to take advantage of how Denver covers, which is going to be a very similar defensive scheme to what we just saw Phoenix do and what we just saw Anthony Edwards and, and Minnesota's ball handlers carve up, which is that Jokic is going to step up against... The ball handler in the pick and roll, leaving that pocket pass to Gobert open, leaving some switches or some some smaller help between Gobert and the basket. Can he make those kickout passes? Can he score on those guys? Can he duck in for some post ups? Can his offensive developments as a player punish Denver being a little bit of a smaller team and being a team whose defense is exploitable? I think if Minnesota's offense can reach the heights that it just did, and then some, which it will have to do because the Suns laid an egg. They weren't even a good offense in that series. They can win this series, but I think on both ends, Gobert is a huge, huge part of what's going to have to happen. Yeah, I and I agree with you, and I think they, they probably, I, I think they are going to just play it straight up in crunch time when push comes to shove, and what I like about that is I, I'm really interested to see what they do with the matchups because I, 
I think we also saw something from Anthony Edwards in that first round going toe to toe with Kevin Durant and picking him up in crunch time. It's is Anthony Edwards going to guard Jamal Murray in crunch time in this series? And I, I love that, you know, for Jamal Murray, who's going up and down, like around these screens and all these things like Anthony Edwards is really good at kind of getting skinny or fight or just not or just getting bigger and fighting his way through the screens uh, yeah. and doing all those things. And he's he's got the energy to do it on both ends. This is not a guy where we're like, oh, we, he's going to get tired out defensively. We don't we want to keep his energy for offense. No, he's he's good. He's good to go both ends full tilt for 48 minutes. Uh, and so yep. I think you've got that. That puts Conley probably on KCP. I, I like the idea of maybe putting McDaniels on uh, on Aaron Gordon. And then, yeah. and then that way, especially you can kind of when they go the small, switches I think. And stuff. If yep. Towns is ever not on the court and you have Alexander Walker out there, which they did mm. close with against the Suns at times, yeah. again, just speaking to the continued uncertainty around Towns, they might succeed in spite of him in this series as much as that sucks to hear for, you know, Wolves fans who are paying that guy a lot of money. If they do that, then you have McDaniels as a helper. You have Gobert on Jokic and you have Nikhil fighting through screens and you're kind of keeping your general structure intact the same way you would if Cat was on the court, but you're a little more versatile. And I like Cat going up uh, on Michael Porter Jr. here too because yep. he's not really a guy that's involved in the offense. The offense doesn't go through him, it goes to him. And you can just have Cat stationed there, put a big body in front of uh, MPJ who's got that high release point and and at least bother him a little bit and then when he's not getting the ball cat can maybe shade over as, as a little bit of more of a help defender and just provide a mm -hmm. little bit more size in the paint uh when, whether it's Jokic or Aaron Gordon slashing in or whoever it might be so we'll be uh, we'll see what happens with that I, I do think it's just gonna this is gonna be such a big cat series it really is the one thing that the teams need to do to beat the Nuggets the Nuggets don't take a lot of threes and they they give up the fewest amount of threes in the league and that's all of it is by design it's a system that works and and it it, it, it it's it's greased well and and, it, and they've been able to kind of rinse and repeat it over the last few years but yeah cat is sort of the one guy who could break that it's hey it you can't really run me off the line because i'm seven feet tall and i don't care you can't and and i can get it from the corner i can get it above the break i could do it and pick and pop i can get it off of driving kicks like he could do it from everywhere and he's an awesome three-point shooter obviously can he just get up a volume of threes? Like this guy should be, and I'm not even kidding, he should be taking 10 three-pointers a game in this series. And, and and that's the way to sort of beat the math because you're going to have to score with Denver. You're right. Like that defense is exploitable, but you're going to have to score with them because that offense is is their best defense, right? And yep. you're so you're going to have to get to some watermark offensively, water level offensively, and and kind of getting up that three-point volume is is a major way of doing that. I agree. I, this nugget from um, Beyond the RK on Twitter, who is mostly a, a magic guy, but does some good analytics and film stuff, is good follow. He he said, he retweeted this from last year in advance of this series getting a, a repeat, which is that Towns shot 27% with nine turnovers when guarded by Aaron Gordon last year. Not great. Not great, right? But, so Nas Reed will be here which he wasn't in last postseason and i think those moments when Jokic is off the court and likely towns will be on the court playing center and reed will be playing power forward if we just use you know old-fashioned position titles there but gordon will be guarding towns in those moments and then reed probably guarded by like peyton watson right so can how do they punish those moments do they do they spread the nuggets out do they maybe actually, you know, sort of focus on Reed as a scorer and, and maybe Towns as a playmate? Like, there's all sorts of things that they can do there, but it just returns to one of the key things about this series, which is the Wolves are a deeper team. That's for sure, mm -hmm. right? So Nikhil Alexander-Walker, I think, is better than any Nuggets bench player. I think you can maybe even say the same thing about Nas Reed, whether they go Monte Morris or whatever they do from there, Kyle Anderson. We'll kind of see, but... Those bench and, and hybrid units, when especially Jokic is off the court, Minnesota needs to, to dominate those. And a big yep. part of that is also going to be predicated upon upon Towns. I think, I think we what, need to... What, I think what this series will come down to ultimately is the Timberwolves went up against a team that had no idea what it wanted to do with the Phoenix Suns, right? <laughs> they didn't know what they were trying to accomplish on a possession-to-possession -possession basis. The yep. Nuggets know exactly what they want to accomplish every single minute of the game, especially when Jokic is on the floor. And to go against that, where the Timberwolves were able to do what they did by making the simple pass, right? How many times did we hear Anthony Edwards just making the simple read, doing the simple thing? It's like, that works. Simple works against Phoenix. 
I don't I don't know that it's it's not necessarily a simple will or won't work against Denver. It's just when Jokic is picking them apart defensively because he will. How does Chris Finch, who by the way might not even be on the sideline for the beginning of this game, the beginning of the series, which is a big thing because he's a great or coach any of and, it. I mean, or I don't any know. of it, right? So TBD on that. That that's a huge wrinkle in this thing. Um, but how do these players figure that out in real time, right? That to me is what I'm going to be watching because Denver is so unsolvable. I don't expect the Timberwolves to solve them with IQ, and that's sort of the gambit by Tim Connolly is. We're not going to solve them with IQ necessarily because nobody's outsmarting yeah. Jokic in the Nuggets. But maybe we could sort of counter it with size and all these other things. Let's see how far that goes because now, like you said, they've got the personnel available to them for now. Let, let, let's see how far that goes. Well, and a big part of what they were able to do to Phoenix, right, in terms of their offense reaching a level we didn't expect, they scored in transition like gangbusters. Yeah. The Suns were just feeding them opportunities in transition by turning the ball over, by not getting back. Anthony Edwards, that like prowling, like a leopard little gallop that he does when he's mm -hmm. kind of, am I going to attack in transition? Am I not? Like, that's one of the most scary things in the NBA. The Suns just decided to lay down when those moments happened. And that's not going to be there against the Nuggets. They, they're not going to make mistakes. You have to, you have to pitch a perfect game to beat them. But I think I'll just close with Ant. I don't think KCP is the type of defender physically, athletically, that's going to... Ant, I don't think, is going to feel him much. He'll be in position. He's not going to let Ant have easy stuff, get to where he wants, no problem. But he's not going to prevent Ant from getting downhill, from getting around a screen, from right. getting to his pull-up three. Ant's going to be able to do what he wants to do. And he is the type of player that can skewer the way that Denver plays defense, right? It's... Part of why you've seen like even a, an offense like Memphis's in past years yeah. because of John Morant give the Nuggets issues and those two teams have had some fun games. If Ant can consistently get downhill, which if you watch back film from this year, there's times where Jokic would come out to the level of the screen. Ideally, the point of that is we're going to get the ball moving. We're not going to let the ball handler beat us. Right, create and a Anthony wall, Edwards get it going said, side to side. Yeah, exactly. And Anthony Edwards said bet and just got downhill. Just <laughs> exactly. ran past Nikola Jokic. And if you can do that, you're saying, can Ant finish on Aaron Gordon? Can he draw Gordon as help and kick it? And we saw the role players step up and those guys need to be in, in an attack mentality from deep and everything. But that's how their pick and roll coverage falls apart. That's how their we're going to prevent threes mentality falls apart. And that's how you can really start to make the Nuggets uncomfortable. Yeah. Problem is good thing getting there because they've lost like single digit playoff games across five rounds in a row now. But I think Ant, if he can continue to be at the level that he was, is certainly a player who could do that to them.